back in here. So what you're the, trying to say is power faint mixer back in here, or blaster mixer. Translation Tools. good locker. Good. Work. What you're trying to say is some assembly required. Well, you could say this that. This could be something nice. Yeah. With the right person and the yeah. right tool, it's not us. So I am here with the high roller and the kid, Paul and Bogard. Tell me, what has it been like filming Storage Wars Canada? So intense. The auctions are ridiculous. Lots of work, and it's too real. Is there any difference between doing a show about Storage Wars and actually like just buying lockers before the show? There's a little more attention now, but it's the same work. You've got to still buy it, you still got to clear it out, still got to sell it, still got to dump it. What do you mean before? No, right now, there's more competition. People are taking runs at you. It's a little bit more intense. You really have to be on your game. You know, obviously, like, Storage Wars Canada is going to be compared to Storage Wars in the States. Do you guys sort of see any similarities with any of those characters? Like, as soon as I saw the casting for this, I'm like, oh, you know, the high roller and the kid, that's just like Daryl and his son. So do you get that a lot? Please, Please. Do, not, do not relate us to them. Interviews ended. No. <laughs> but you see, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because you're, you're going to say that Roy is like Hester and... I, the only no, no. similarity. Roy's not character. Sorry, Hester's just mean. Mm -hmm. Roy is character. The only similarities I see is that they have the same names. Storage Wars. We're Canada. Totally different show. Yeah, it's Canadians. You know how we are. We always do a little bit different and a little nicer. Well, see, that's what's interesting because you know when I saw the episode being filmed today, you were still sort of like butting heads, and I was like, oh, this is supposed to be Canadian. I thought that oh, if Ursula is going to bid, let's just let her have it. She's a pretty girl. But there was none of that. I thought for a Canadian show, you guys would be a little bit nicer. Oh, I, I forgot to say a at the end of okay. my insult. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, stereotype. <laughs> no, no, we're still out to make money. If it's real money, we're bidding. If we make, if we buy a locker and we sell it, it's real money. We win or lose. So it's really, it's like, I'm not going to take someone take money right out of my mouth or his mouth. What, what is the secret? You know, I did my best to sort of look inside the locker with my dinky little flashlight. I couldn't see what you guys see. So is there a trick when you're trying to figure out what locker to buy? Is there something I should be looking for, maybe unopened boxes or tools? Me, personally, we look for the mystery. So the, the closed boxes, the things you can't see. We try to avoid garbage bags because generally there's a lot of garbage in mm. them but everything else there's mystery and there can be anything in there and that's what we do this for for the gamble there's always clues and i'm not going to tell you what they are uh i heard you guys are pretty big into the sports memorabilia so is that what you're looking for like sticks maybe baseball cards that sort of thing gold silver sports memorabilia any kind of collectibles because people do collect mm -hmm. and that's where the real money is because collectibles are small compact easy to take out and generally easy to sell same. Oh, yeah, I, I totally with that. I, I like the electronics personally because I think that they're much easier to sell. You know, uh, did you ever think that you would be doing this for a career? Because it's a pretty, you know, like when somebody says, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an accountant. I'm a doctor. What do you guys say? Do you just say with your storage hunters or like what's the, what's the term you fill out on your T1? Uh, pff, I'm a gambler. Hey, I, you know what, from when I was young, he's always been in the auction business, and I said, hey, I'll never, ever go into that business. Look what I'm in. I, I feel like your story might be the most compelling, right? Because there is a real, like, familial relationship. Like, are you really sort of trying to pass the hat on to Bogart? We, we, I, we opened a store right opposite to the, one of the biggest coin and car, coin shops in Canada, buys gold. We, we buy for less. We're, we, location, location, location. The business is going to come to us. We're into it, like, that is our business. We're buying and selling gold, silver, sports collectibles. It's real, like I say, we've actually got a, a brick and mortar store. This show is great, and it gives me a chance to show him stuff, and we're getting to make some money at the same time. I'm learning a lot of things that I wouldn't have, get to, I wouldn't have the chance to learn before, mm -hmm. and I never thought I would adapt to it, but now I'm starting to really like this business. And, and my final question is this, you know, when I watch Storage Wars, it doesn't matter if it's Canada, Texas, New York, whatever, I always wonder, like, yeah, they're buying all this stuff, but are they actually able to resell it? So do you sell the stuff that you find in these lockers? Uh, a lot of it we are able to resell. Uh, sometimes you have to take a, lower, a lot lower price than you first evaluated it at. And some stuff that actually has a value might be going to the trash sometimes. But most of the time, what we say the price is, is usually what we can sell it for. There's sometimes we get stuff that, like you just said, we don't get what we want for it. And there's other stuff that's like, whoa, I'm a fan. And that's what, you know, that's what makes it worth it. We don't know how the day is going to end. When we wake up in the morning, we don't know how it's going to end.
And last question, Storage Wars Canada premieres August 29th on OLN. Why should people tune in? Oh, we are crazy, outrageous characters. Uh, look at you. What, did you write the commercial? <laughs> oh, stop. In real life. Perfect. I am here with Rick and Cindy, the veterans from Storage Wars Canada. Now, tell me, did you find these shoes in a storage unit? Because they're pretty banging. Uh, no, I found those in Las Vegas last year. <laughs> uh, why are you guys the veterans? Is it just because you've been doing this a long time? Are you that much more experienced than the rest of the cast? Uh, yeah, we are. I think we are. Mm -hmm. We are definitely more experienced than the rest of the cast. You know, uh, I've seen the first episode, and you obviously uh, butted heads with Ursula. Is it just the fact that like it's somebody new sort of like trying to stake claim in your territory? Well, yeah, a little bit of that is true. Yeah, there's a new woman in my hood, and yeah, my guns are up. That's right, and uh, who comes to uh, auction just like that? <laughs> are, you, are, are you ever concerned about looking at Ursula the wrong way because uh, your wife is right beside you? No, I'm pretty confident uh, that my wife is uh, confident in me. And that wouldn't bother me anyway. You know, uh, on the U.S. version, all of them always use these tricks, you know, like they put the camera on like a plane or they send somebody in to scope it out first. Are we going to see any of that on Storage Wars Canada? You know what? Um, I wouldn't know what they're going to do. Maybe, but we can't really say because you guys got to watch it. But it doesn't seem like you guys are the type that are going to do that. You know, you don't really seem like tricksters. You're just there for the goods and then you leave. Would that be yeah, a fair assessment? Kinda, yeah, that's a fair assessment. We're serious exactly. bidders. We're serious bidders. I'm not going to come in on a zip business. line or or uh, come out from behind a puff of smoke. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're here to do business, yeah. Now, you know, whenever I tune into Storage Wars, they buy all these units, and then I wonder, what happens to that stuff inside? Is it all sellable? Like, do you have to get rid of a lot of the stuff? Like, in a percentage way, do you keep maybe 80%, lose 20 Is it something like that? Well, every locker is different. Uh, we do throw a lot of things to uh, the dump. We take it, take it to the dump. We uh, donate a lot. Oh, yes, uh, but in our store... Storage Treasure Thrift Store at 201 Eagle Street. We sell all of the things yeah, that are most really of good. Our stuff, yeah. So it would be it would be possible for somebody to tune in, see you guys win something, and then own it themselves from you. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. All they have to do is come to Storage Treasures Thrift Store and they own it. What do you think is the best part about being on this show? Obviously, it's like raised awareness about storage units and storage purchases in general. But is there one maybe thing that stands out about it? Yes. Uh, it's raising awareness of Storage Treasures Thrift Store mm -hmm. in Newmarket okay, at 201 Eagle Street. Right. <laughs> storage Treasures Thrift Store. Is it, wait. Thrift Store. Thrift, okay, one more time. Storage Treasures Thrift Store, 201 Eagle Street in Newmarket. That's, That's correct. Right. Okay, there we go. That's right. So why should people tune in to Storage Wars Canada? I think that uh, people should tune in to uh, Storage Wars Canada because here in Canada, there are treasures to be found. They're going to be uncovered, and we're going to find them right here in these storage lockers. And that's a fact. Last question is this. You know, people think Canadians are very polite. They always finish their sentences with A. But yet, when I watched the storage wars today, I felt like heads were butting. People were getting in each other's faces. Is that what we're going to see? Or is it just like, oh, Ursula, you know, she's a girl. Let's just let her have it. Uh, no. That's not no, going to no, happen. No, no, that, no. That doesn't happen at storage units. I always tell people, if you want the unit, buy it. If you don't, beat it. That's right. Get out of my Simple. way because I'm coming through. Yeah. And that's, I'm going to promise you that. August 29th, Storage Wars Canada on OLN. Okay, folks, how much here? Thousand? Fifty-five dollars. Please. Thousand. Thousand, eleven hundred. Yeah. Eleven, a bit of that, twelve, we yep. go twelve, a bit of that, thirteen, get a thirteen, a bit of that, fourteen, fifteen, 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 get the yep. lady at fourteen, fifteen, third. Sixteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, yep. nineteen. Yep. Nineteen, a bit of that, two thousand where? Yeah. Two thousand and fifty and twenty-one. Yep. Two thousand fifty, you got here twenty-one, get a one one, get a one one, get a one one. Sold. $2,050. <laughs> All right, I am here with Storage Wars Canada cast members, Ursula, a.k.a. my favorite, Don the auctioneer, <laughs> and Roy the instigator. Um, what happened to your second favorite? Well, well I mean, you're kind of stealing my outfit here, so I can't really pull for you. I got here first, buddy. Really? <laughs> um, okay, so I, I want to start with the whole Storage Wars Canada experience. Has it been different from attending auctions before the show started? Uh, definitely. I mean, I haven't, you know, I'm still new to the game, but I had gone out before the show had started and um, 
different in the sense that it's it's brought more awareness so you know the lines are longer to take a look in the auctions sometimes uh you know the cost of the locker because there's so many people bidding on it goes up but you know ultimately the, the what you have to do stays the same and don how has it been different with the cameras rolling well since the uh, cameras have come out uh, especially with the u.s show uh, the crowd has gone from you know a dozen or 15 maybe 20 people on a busy day uh, to now where if there isn't 50 or 75 it's a small crowd and uh, upwards some days of 150 or 200 it's really sl uh, slowed the whole action thing down because we used to walk by it in two minutes and sell it and go on to the next one now we're five to ten minutes at each locker and uh, of course now you've got the camera crew that's kind of in the way too and people have to sneak around them but uh, and I would say prices have probably increased by a percentage or two and uh, you know, there's been people come and go since, uh, you know, the word got out. And, uh, you know, now this hasn't been on TV yet, but it's going to be on soon. And uh, maybe you should come back in a month and ask us again. And, and Roy, you know, like, you're the villain of the show. What is that? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, you're like the villain in red. Um, what has that been like? Do people, like, have they started yelling at you since the show hasn't started airing yet? Or do you expect that when it does? People just come up to me and tell me how great I'm doing and uh, autographs. What? They usually bring me gifts and flowers and stuff like that. I don't even know what you're talking about. Gifts and flowers? Do they do this yeah. off camera? Yeah. Huh. Does it, does it ever surprise you the types of stuff that people leave behind or forget about? Because I can't imagine, you know, sometimes you see a ring or like a TV and it's like, how do you forget about that? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there are many lockers that I've opened up and I think, oh my goodness, why are you storing this? Or many things I'm actually embarrassed to see. And I'm thinking, I don't think they meant for us to see this. So, uh, yeah, the type of things I'm quite surprised. Um, even the valuable things that we found, just shocked, absolutely shocked. So you could only imagine the situation that they were in to forget it or not be able to pay for it. So, yeah, but you have to tune in to find out what those things are. I think that uh, a lot of these lockers that we open, um, in, in a lot of cases, maybe a divorce situation. Um, you know, everybody's gone different ways. Stuff got stored. She don't want it. He don't want it or whatever. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they get into a financial jam and can't afford to pay the rent and because uh, the rent starts to add up after a while. Um, you know, a, a lot of the stuff, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of the stuff, some of the stuff is uh, like landscape stuff and uh, people's tools and all that kind of stuff. Maybe they've been running a small business Got into a jam, uh, no profit, no money, can't come and pay the, the rent, and then we have to sell them. That's the law of the land. And, and Roy, you know, like a lot of people, when they hear Storage Wars Canada, they compare it to the U.S. version. Oh, you know that Roy, he's just like the northern Dave Hester. You know, uh, is that sort of hard to deal with? Is that something you think about when you're, like, bidding or dropping these one-liners? No, not at all, because Dave Hester is ugly. I'm not. <laughs> right? He's not funny like me doesn't have a body like me. Mm -hmm. So how can you compare me to Dave Hester? I'm the, right? the villain thing. I'm modest, ain't he? <laughs> no, he's a professional and I'm a professional. I'll give you that. But me and, me and Dave Hester is nothing like it. I'm kind of a mix between Dave and Barry if you want to mix them up. Yep. But, nah. <laughs> Canadians are better and smarter than Americans. So I don't care what those people say. I want to prove that we are better and smarter. Who would win in a storage lock knockoff between you and Dave? <laughs> me. He's broke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, you know, the show premieres on August the 29th. Why should people tune in to watch? Uh, you know what? To support Canadians, right? I mean, you know what? You want to watch uh, anything that's homegrown, local, and uh, it doesn't get, you know, better than this. Uh, we give you a genuine taste of what it is to come out to lockers and, you know, to these auctions and, and buy. And um, you know what? I, I think for them to watch, they'll get a, a bit more of an intimate view of mm -hmm. the buyers right and you get to know us and we'll you know understand our view of you the way you dress oh when's it start again <laughs> see you weren't even listening no. <laughs> like... you want me to answer he wasn't even listening <laughs> i think uh people that drive by these storage locations every day because there's hundreds of them around the city uh i don't think a lot of them have ever stored anything so they don't know what the storage business is about and uh, if they watch it, and they might go down the road someday and go, oh, yeah, that's the place down the street from us or whatever. Oh, is that what a storage place is like? And I think that they'll find out what the storage business is about and, of course, the delinquent accounts and uh, just give them a little bit better idea as to what actually happens.
And then Roy, why should people tune in? Because they're going to see that we do it better here. They're going to see four outrageous characters and one auctioneer, and they're going to see how we, how we do business, how we play, <clears throat> how we work. Um, I think they're going to appreciate that we can do it better, if not the best. I think, too, that the... Uh, you want this done? Come on! Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, listen, I, I think bo the bottom line is, even Roy, they will see that we all have a heart. I mean, we're all here trying to, you know, to make a living, trying to make some money. And in the end, you know, ultimately, you know, I think people will be able to um, relate, at least one of us. Can you so. just say it'll be entertaining? It will be entertaining. <laughs> and and my, my final question is for you, Ursula. Sure. Uh, I don't know if you're hiring or if you need, like, an assistant or something <laughs> or somebody to, like, help you carry stuff out of each locker, but I feel like I could do a job. I'd probably be the best guy, like, you know. Be careful what you volunteer for. <laughs> hey, if, if you're looking for a job, no problem. Okay. I'm hiring. Okay, perfect.